So I had a coaching session today that uh, where I tried something a little different. Um, I have uh, an employee that I uh, support that in my particular area of expertise uh, doesn't typically do very well. Um, and, you know, struggles uh, not just with the skill uh, in order to um, excel at this type of sale with a customer, um, but also the desire to do so. Uh, he doesn't find a lot of value in what he what he's doing, and 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 uses the difficulty of the conversation with the customer as a reason uh, to justify not trying as hard. Um, as a leader and as a coach, you have a lot of different options on how to deal with low performance. And I wanted to do something that was a bit different than what I've done in the past. I usually kind of show them, you know, the benefits of things and I walk through role plays and, and I always try to kind of show him um, easy ways to get the job done with minimal effort on his part. And that has worked a little bit. He's improved a little bit. Uh, but not to the degree that I was hoping for. So today I decided I, I wanted to do something different. And I think this comes down to is most people don't want to be bad at their job. Most people want to actually be really good at what they do. Um, as long as it doesn't take so much effort that they feel exhausted at the end of the day. Or that they're so pressured to be good at it um, that they can't really do it the way that they were hoping to. So I decided that, you know, let's look at his entire performance uh, metric uh, scorecard. So I had him bring up his uh, his performance metrics, and I said, okay, um, pointed had him pointed out to me the areas that he's doing very well in, and I just I said, you know, like this area here seems to be like you know almost 300% above target. Like, wow, that's amazing, and he beamed with pride. And I and I said, okay, well, like, walk me through, you know, what is it about this that you love so much? And he says, oh, James, like. I get a chance to really connect with my customer. We talk about their wants and their needs, and I, I really feel like I deepen my relationship with them. Um, I, I, I become more a part of the community with them. I get an idea of what their vision for the future is and how they might use this product. Um, and then I get a chance to actually see the impact of it happen uh, once they've actually purchased it. Um, and in the end, what I'm doing is I'm problem solving for them. They've got a problem and I'm trying to figure out how to uh, solve it in the best way possible. And this one area, this product that I offer is a brilliant solution. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's amazing. So then I, 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 I looked at the other way and I said, okay, so this uh, product over here, now which wasn't my product, which wasn't what I coach, um, this seems to be one of the lowest metrics that you have. Um, you know, what is it about this one that makes it difficult? He goes, oh, I don't know, I've just always struggled with it. And he went on to this normal routine, which is to kind of throw up these roadblocks that are external roadblocks um, that prevent him. And I said, oh, okay, interesting. So to my mind, when you have this type of conversation, you get an opportunity to really kind of dig deeper with your customer and you kind of build a relationship with them and you kind of find out what they want or need in regards to, you know, their life situation, where they're going and that sort of thing. And he's like, yeah, and I go, okay. Um, you get a chance to kind of uh, figure out what the impact will be to them long term when they use this service uh, and this product that you're offering. And he's like, yeah, and I go, okay. And then you really kind of problem solve because there's about three different ways you can use this product. You have to figure out like a tailored suit, which of these is gonna work best for them. And he's like, yeah. And I go, interesting. Do you see the similarity that I do? He's like, what do you mean? I go, well, in all the things you love about the first one where you're destroying your target, each one of those is present in this product that you're not doing so well in. And I, can I be honest with you? Yeah. He said, okay. And I said, um, I think it's part of the reason is, is because you haven't really spent much time understanding that this product is essentially the other product. The only difference is you haven't tried to approach it in the same way before with the same level of commitment and passion and energy. Um, I mean, it's got all the elements of things that you like. And he's like, oh my God, yeah, you're right. And he goes, well, there's another challenge. And he brought up another one, which is a real challenge. He said, you know, in this product, you kind of have to have, you know, a minimum $500 saved up before it will really work for you. And I said, okay, so you encounter in your area, a lot of customers that maybe don't have that $500 already available to them. He's like, yeah. And, and I'm like, okay, that makes sense to me then. There's an actual barrier. They, they're not ready to pull the trigger yet. So therefore, it's almost impossible to really talk about the product from your perspective. He's like, yeah. And I go, interesting. 
Now, do we have products and services that we could offer to that customer that would maybe in the long term or even short term help them free up $500 worth of value? And he's like, yeah, we do. And I go, okay, so maybe we could take that, the same principles and say, hey, you know, Mr. Smith, um, I think that this product would be an amazing fit for you. I know it's going to fit your needs, but I know that you right now are not financially in a place where you can afford it. But I've got a couple different things I can talk to you about that would put you in a better position. So, and then you can go forward and, and help them get to that position. So really, what you're doing is you're just saying, there's a runway, I'm gonna get you on the tarmac like an airplane, we're gonna run you down the tarmac until you're ready to take flight, right? I'm gonna help you get to that $500 and then when, they, when you reach that $500 mark, you and me are gonna have a really awesome conversation. And he's like, oh. I go, so the only thing you're missing is you didn't walk it back further and say, how do I get you as my customer into a position where this will be ready for you? And so taking that exact same approach, because I, again, we focused on what he was really good at, what he loved doing. We showed him the principles behind what he loves doing is the exact same in this other one. And we helped him kind of walk back a barrier that fits with that one. So I could tell that he was excited about um, the, the prospect of going forward into this type of conversation in the future. And then I switched gears and said, okay, now in the area that I coach, which of these elements that you love doing is still present in that area? And we found out all of them. You're still building a connection with the customer. You're still helping them grow their current and their future situation. You've still got problem solving. You still get to see the impact of the service or product that you're offering. Um, and there's, there's some strategy to it, but it all fills in all his interior emotional check boxes to be awesome at it. And, I, and, then I, and then I said, you know, in the last couple months, I've given you like 10 different best practices that will, you, that will work towards making this particular product faster and easier and less work for you. Um, am I right in saying that sometimes it feels like you're just trying to take on too much and, and you haven't really looked at it from the perspective of this is actually getting you all the different check boxes that you need. And he's like, yeah. And I go, okay, well now you know it. I can see the gleam in your eye. So I reinforced that he, I saw that interest. Um, I know that you are, you're interested in trying this, but, it's, but again, you're interested now, but I know when it comes to the actual conversation, it's gonna be a bit hesitant. And that's because you're gonna to try to go, oh man, James has 10 best practices he wants me to implement. So I said, stop. Here's a yellow highlighter. Highlight one of these best practices that you think is the easiest to try. And he highlighted one, and I thought it was a really good one. It was demonstrating the affordability and breaking down the affordability to the customer and a daily cost and not a monthly cost. So it really allows a customer to think, okay, how will this impact my budget on a daily basis and my lifestyle on a daily basis? Because when you're offering a product or service to uh, a customer, um, that they don't see the immediate value in. They also need to understand that they can afford it without giving up their lifestyle because no one wants to give up their coffee to have something uh, uh, that they're paying for that they don't really understand how it's gonna work yet. So you need to get them in that place where they can understand it. And I thought this was a great uh, first, uh, first action that they were gonna do. I said, now though, the only difference between the conversation you had yesterday and the versus the conversations you're gonna have tomorrow is that you're gonna walk into that conversation fully engaged with all the things that you love. So I said, I wrote down the list. I said, connect, deepen the relationship, find out their current state and their future state that they want, um, problem solve for the customer and strategize for them. And, and then later on, follow up and see the impact. I said, now, I want you to have this written down at your desk and remind yourself of these items before you're meeting with the customer and then just remind yourself and read over that one best practice you're gonna use. And I guarantee you, I promise you, if you do that, your next conversation is gonna feel a heck of a lot better. Well, that was the first time I've ever walked into a coaching session with this individual and watched them look excited. In fact, they were so excited, they actually told their manager as I was leaving um, what they planned on doing, which I've never seen from them before. And what I did was, I didn't tell them what I needed from them. I didn't tell them what, where they were going, what they were doing. I took what they were good at. I showed them how they could turn what they're good at into something uh, into something they love doing into exactly what I needed for them in a way that would make sense to them. And I think that that's a, a, a big key. 
it is sometimes with a customer, so with a, with an employee or someone you're coaching, doesn't matter whether it's at work or in personal life, there's got to be something that they're good at that they want to do uh, and they do really well. If you can figure out what elements of that drive their gears and get the you know get them excited, and then you can say, well, you know, this criteria that you need to be engaged exists in, over here. And this one that you need to be engaged and excited about exists over here. And this one too. And then they start to go, oh yeah, crap, there is a lot to be excited about this other area. Suddenly things change. So that's my message. I really think that, uh, you know, if you boil it down is, is um, start by talking about what the person's really good at. Focus on a different area and, and figure out what elements of that exist in the other area and then bring it around to what you want to talk about. But but make sure that you do it in such a way that shows them the level of confidence that you have in their ability to take that and do something extraordinary with it. And I guarantee you, you're going to feel different when you come out of that. It takes a bit of practice, um, but I tried it today and it worked like a charm with someone that um, you know I haven't really broken through to before. I, I, I truly think that this is gonna change the relationship that I have with this individual going forward. That's my, that's my rant. Uh, have an amazing day. Take care, take action.